You've heard people say that 40s is the new 30s. So, uh, some of us are saying that 50s is the new 30s. Uh, so, we're trying to hang on, to, you know, we're trying to clean on to it. <laughs> and, ladies, you've you heard it and you probably said it that orange is a new black. Or is it black is a new orange? I don't know which, which way it goes. Right? Orange is a new black. Well, I'm here to tell you a new one. Wisdom is the new prophetic. Okay, I know I got a little serious on you, right? I started out as a joke, but then I got a little serious on you. So I'm going to give you a little, little chance. Wisdom is the new prophetic. So I want to talk to you about a prophetic issue that had our attention just a short time ago. And now it's upon us that we're not even aware of it. See, I want to talk to you about the Shemitah. You remember that? Maybe some of you don't even, never even heard of it. And I understand that. Maybe this is like the what? Um, but I, I know that some of you did hear about this a few years ago when it was all the rage. Jonathan Kahn, the Shemitah, the, the year of release and the year of giving rest to the land. Here's the thing. This holiday season begins a new year of Shemitah. In Hebrew, in Hebrew, we say, we call it the Shemitah. Shemitah. And it's not up, uh, uh, upon us because it's allowed to start. We haven't even heard about it. Have you heard about it? I mean, how did you hear about it? It's the previous cycle. We're talking about seven years ago. This comes every seven years. Very few of us have actually heard about it this time around. It's almost like the Shabbat is coming and we're like, what? 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 It is here. It's Friday night. It's Friday 3 p.m. <laughs> and we haven't heard about the Shabbat, about the Sabbath. Well, the year of the rest of the release of the land is here. Up. And we haven't even heard about it. See, the last time around, it was 2014, 2015, and it was all in the news, it was all over YouTube, books, videos, teachings, the church was talking about it, everybody was talking about it. And now, it came back around and we don't even know it. But you know, the Lord knows. He watches over these things. And He does things on these occasions. And it can be something ominous or something surprising. We don't know. I want to talk a little bit about this new twist to this year that is just beginning. And we're going to have to play catch up. Catch up with what the Lord is doing, what the Spirit is doing as we enter into this season. What does this mean? What is the Lord about to do? I want to compare. Let me tell you this. Some of you have heard me say this. That I don't like to serve uh, reheated food. I want to cook from scratch. And I'm talking about my messages, right? Uh, seldom do I use a message again. Not because they're not good or because, you know, but because I want a, work, a fresh word for the moment, for the occasion. That, that's just how I work. But there is a principle that's higher than that principle for me, which is 
I want to preach, I want to teach. What the Lord says, I need to. So if he says, boy, I want you to pull out that old servant and I want you to bring it back again, then he is boss and I'm going to do that. That doesn't happen very often. But you know what? It's happening today. It's happening today. Because I have this message that I preached even before we came to Sakai. This is 2015. We came to Sakai in 2016. So I, have, I actually haven't preached this at Sakai. So I think I could. <laughs> And what's interesting is that this old sermon with my old notes, we're talking about the year of the Shita in 2014 2015. And when I look at the things that I, that, I, that I wrote and what I was receiving from the Lord at that time, and compared to today, honestly, is alarming. Because we have been on a trend. And when things trend and you check later, they're not at the same spot. They're either higher or they are lower. They're farther out. They're not at the same spot. That can be a good thing, like a good thing, or it may not be so good. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to be in Deuteronomy chapter 15. If you have your Bibles, you probably didn't bring your Bible today, but you brought your phone, right? You got your iPad, <laughs> so you can pull it out and click your way to it. Deuteronomy 15, Deuteronomy chapter 15. This is a passage that speaks in detail about the, the Shittah. It says, at the end of every seven years, you shall grant a remission of debts. That word remission, that's the word of that. A forgiveness and release of debts. Now, you need to understand that uh, slavery in the ancient Near East was actually all about debt. For the most part, it, it had to do with debt. Uh, of course, they had wars and conquering in, in wars and things like that. But for the most part, your common slave was not like the slavery that we know in America or in the, in the Western world in the, you know, 300 years ago, 200 years ago. That, that was a different kind of slavery. The slavery that we see in the Bible, for the most part, is because of debt. And so when we hear about debt or forgiveness of debt, we need to be thinking about slavery, bondage, and release from bondage. So, at the end of every seven years, you need to grant freedom to those who are indebted to you, who are in bondage to you because of debt. Verse 2, this is the manner of remission. Every creditor shall release what he has loaned to his neighbor. He shall not accept it of his neighbor and his brother because the Lord's remission has been proclaimed. From a foreigner you may accept it, but your hand shall release whatever of yours is with your brother. However, there will be no poor among you, since the Lord will surely bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess. If only you listen obediently to the voice of the Lord your God. Yeah, that's what we were trying to do here today. With the sound of the shofar, is our voice going out to the Lord in His voice crying out to us. The heart here is to listen to the Lord. To listen to the voice of the Lord your God. Shema. And it says to observe, listen to observe carefully all his commandments which I am commanding you today. For the Lord your God will bless you as he has promised you, and you will lend to many nations. But you will not borrow. You 
will not be enslaved in bondage to other nations. And you will rule over many nations, but they will not rule over you. So the, all of this setup was supposed to be a blessing to Israel. As Israel trusted in the Lord, the Lord blessed them as a nation, as individuals, as families. But when they didn't follow this, then it became judgment. It turned into judgment. So we see the reversal of verse 6. Again, it says, For the Lord your God will bless you as he has promised you, and you will lend to many nations. But when you reverse this, then it means you will borrow from many nations. And you will rule over many nations. But when you reverse it, then many nations are going to rule over you because you have debts to them. And you will be ruled. not a blessing for Israel. We read through the book of Judges time after time. Israel under bondage. Israel under bondage. That was not the idea that God had in mind for them. You see, we need to understand this in the spiritual realm. What does this mean? For me, what does this mean for us as a community, for us as a country? Not only what the what the mean in the ancient time, but what does it mean for me today? Am I in bondage? Am I indebted? Maybe not in dollars, but how I enter into a contract relationship. with values, with lies, how I bought into lies, have I come into agreement with things that frankly place me in bondage? Am I in bondage? <coughs> we will pay that day. We will pay it with slavery. Many of us are struggling to break out of those kinds of slavery. <coughs> and a lot of our spiritual journey is about that. Being in the wilderness, not having not entered into the land, but working our way through the wilderness where things are difficult and where things are not fruitful. And we do things and we work hard and we try and things are difficult. And the message is not to feel condemned and feel no hope. But the message is still that remain under the discipline. Allow the Lord to take you through the wilderness. It will end. I know. I was in the wilderness for 20 years. And when the Lord turned my wilderness around, I couldn't believe it. Whereas before, everything I tried will go wrong. And I had no success at anything I tried. Now it's the opposite. And I have to be very careful. Because even the seeds that fall out of my pocket, they turn into things that prosper. So I have to be careful. I, I have to try not to start so many things because they will prosper. I try to have a congregation, start a congregation so many times in my life. And it wasn't until I came to Sukkot when the Lord finally showed me that verse in Psalm 4, as that your people will, will volunteer to you in the day of your power. Your people will volunteer to you in the day of your power. 
I never had that happen. I never saw that prosperity in ministry. Until now. So allow the Lord to take you to the wilderness that you're in. Pay your dues so you get out of it as soon as it is possible. So your year of remission may come. Unfortunately for us in our country, we're smacking the liberal. We don't even know. You see, I think what happened is that uh, we just went through a season and no one's talking about this. Very few people are talking about this. But we just went through a season that was very prophetic that came down crashing in failure. So many voices were prophesying. So, so is going to be. And this and that is going to happen. And it did not. So now, no one trusts in the prophetic. That's why we have not heard of this new cycle of the year that she found. Because we are not ready to hear this again. Nobody is speaking prophetic. But the cycles keep coming. The weeks keep coming. Shabbats keep coming. The years keep coming. And the cycle of seven years, they do keep coming. And some, for some, this means the end, the remission of their slavery, of their bondage. But for those who went through the previous one and didn't learn, didn't pursue freedom for themselves, and find themselves in another cycle, they may find themselves entangled with the things of the world at a deeper level. Maybe not even being comfortable in your slavery. Not even trying to be successful morally, successful um, in pursuing the heart of the Lord. In our country, this is such a state. We are more indebted than any time in history. And I'm not only talking about financial. We have so many masters, so many people ruling over us. Internally, domestically, and foreign rulers. We had a big event just a few months ago, and it turned into a disaster. A repentance that was supposed to bring all kinds of renewals to our country, to our land, only to see everything reversed and everything come into place, the opposite of what we were praying about. <coughs> So shocking, it's hard to even talk about. So we don't. But the cycle keeps coming. And a new year of Shemitah is here. And it's about to start. And it is going to bring what it brings. Blessing to those who pursue freedom and seek to free those who are under their own oppression but curse to those
who continue to pursue more indebtedness, more uh, weakness, who are comfortable under the hand of their rulers. I want to read to you, and I'm not going to be off here, but I want to read to you uh, some of the things I wrote seven years ago. And the way I did it was going through scripture, there are 12 specific spirits mentioned in scripture. I don't understand. Did, did he just say 12? <laughs> don't you all have three points? What do you mean 12? How long are we going to be here? Uh, should I go and get me another plate of no, Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> We're going to go quickly through these. See, Luke 13, 11, it's going to be fast, so you may want to jot it down rather than turn to it. In Luke 13, 11, it speaks of a woman, 18 years, that was, it says that she had a sickness caused by a spirit. In other versions, it says, a spirit of infirmity. She had a spirit of infirmity. In Timothy 1, uh, 2 Timothy 1, 7, it speaks of the Lord did not give us a spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. Hosea 4, 12, it says, My people consult their wooden idol, and their diviners one inform, informs them, for a spirit of harlotry has led them astray. A spirit of harlotry. Spirit of infirmity, spirit of fear, spirit of harlotry. It says, uh, Romans 8, 15, for you have not received a spirit of slavery. A spirit of slavery. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before stumbling. Pride, a prideful spirit comes before stumbling. 1 John 4, 3. And every spirit that does not confess Yeshua is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist. Mark 9.25 When Yeshua saw a crowd, that, that a crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You deaf and mute spirit, I command you to come out of him. Deaf and mute spirit. What's making the demand deaf and mute? Isaiah 61.3 to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. A spirit of fainting. Uh, in other versions, it says a spirit of heaviness. A spirit of heaviness. 2 Chronicles 18 22. Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a deceiving spirit. A lying sin in the mouth of these your prophets. Numbers 5 14. If a spirit of jealousy comes over him and he is jealous of his wife when she has defiled herself, or if a spirit of jealousy comes over him and he is jealous of his wife when she has not defiled herself, he keeps going on. A spirit of jealousy. And I'm going fast. We put this on Facebook. We want to go and look at Scott Shalom on Facebook, watch this video again, listen to this again. Um, Romans 11, 8. Just as it is written, God gave him a spirit of stupor. A spirit of stupor. Eyes to see and uh, to see not, and ears to hear not, down to this very day. The last one. We are from God. He who knows God listens to us. He who is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The spirit of error. All right. Let me tell you, this last one was 1 John 4, 6. 1 John 4, 6. Let me comment briefly. Let me tell you what I wrote seven years ago. And we'll compare a little bit with today. I don't think we need to be the 
say much. Spirit of infirmity. COVID. I did not COVID seven years ago here. But we have that today, right? Weakness in manhood. In values. Weakness in values. Moral values. Weakness in economy. Weakness militarily. I was listening to a, a, a military analyst trying to put into perspective the meaning of all the weapons that were left, that we left in Afghanistan. Ninety billion dollars worth of military equipment. This is a family. Imagine if the Roman, the military from the Roman Empire were, would have left all of the warriors abandoned for others to use them against them. Um, spirit of infirmity is the inability to produce results. That's us. Spirit of fear. We're being terrorized. We are unassertive. We are appeasing. Failure to be and confront. You've grown in this exponential. Spirit of harlotry. Spirit of harlotry. It's a compulsive policing of other powers. A compulsive policing of other powers. Without regard for self or for sexual impurity. That's the spirit of harlotry. I throw myself at others to please them without regard for myself. And you can put that in economic terms, you can put that in military terms, political terms, religious terms, bondage, a spirit of bondage. Shame for the exceptionality of America. Shame for the exceptionality of America. Submission to Islam. That's the spirit of bondage. That's the spirit of bondage that is coming to rule over us. Submission to Islam. The word Islam means submission. That's what they want to do to us. And we are cooperating with them. So they do that to us. Spirit of pride. False freedom. That's us. False freedom. Uh, mainly from God and from moral restrictions. We have grown exponentially in the last seven years. This spirit of Antichrist. What does that mean? Well, you see, there's a spirit of anti Christianity growing leaps and bounds. But the word Christ, Christos, is the word Mashiach, Messiah, anointed. So it's the spirit of anti-anointing. So it is the spirit of anti-supernatural. It is humanism and coming against authority. A deaf and dumb spirit. This is intimidation to not speak. I'm going to shut you down in all social media. That's the spirit of dumb, uh, deaf and dumb spirit. This is unresponsiveness to warnings. You are unresponsive to warnings because you can't hear. Because you can't hear. This is in only in politics. This is in believers. Unresponsiveness to warnings. Spirit of heaviness. It is a continual victimhood and death obsessions. Continual victimhood. That's the spirit of heaviness. It's confusing and irrational thinking. That's the spirit of heaviness. Are we confused? Are we irrational? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Aligned spirit. You see, the end times is all about a great deception. And politics and media are the ones that make it all of this. Amen. Whatever they say is true. If they didn't say it, it didn't happen. Spirit of jealousy. This is envy, division, revenge, anger, rage, hatred, murder. A spirit of stupor. This is lack of discernment of spiritual condition. You don't even know your spiritual condition. This is deep sleep. We're in deep sleep. We are entertained. We are entertained. We are unmotivated to find truth. Unmotivated to find truth. I want to say this. Uh, I'm sorry if I offend someone here or some some once. Men, men don't play video games. Kids play video games. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you that I have never played video games. I love baseball. I love the video games, the baseball video games. I, I, I did it. And my kids will tell you, I'm not trying to be hypocritical. You can talk to them. But when you grow up, Last one, sphere of air, sphere of air. And let me, let me clarify this. Use the time from the beginnings to pursue truth. Don't be unmotivated to find truth, to research, <coughs> spend time to study. All right, sphere of air. This is apostasy, falling away. Uh, be, be, biblically, uh, biblically based seductive doctrines. Did you hear that? Yes. Biblically based seduc seductive uh, doctrines. What am I saying? Uh -huh. These are people who, in the name of Scripture, yes. teach you things that are seducing you away yeah. from the truth. Yes. Things like love. And tolerance and civil obedience. Have you heard about that civil obedience? You, you heard of civil disobedience? <laughs> the apostles practiced civil disobedience. They told them, do not speak in this name anymore. And they said, sure thing. You can come and you can just chop my head off. I ain't going to stop talking. It is reported that some believers in Afghanistan walk up to the Taliban to witness to them, knowing that was those were the last words that were going to, that were going to say this earth. They were killed. And I, I can't wait to hear in the future how those seeds are going to bring fruit of, of men who murdered them and are going to have dreams. By Yeshua, and they're going to come to the Lord. That is going to happen. Because it always happens. Amen. You want to get a hold of all of these spirits. And you want to pray through that, through that list. Because you want to. You want to free yourself yeah. from those things. Amen. 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 Amen.
take some time. Even if you have to work, I understand if you have to work tomorrow or all that. I understand. Make some time to observe the feast. Make some time to focus, to concentrate, to have come out with the Lord. Maybe before you go to work, wake up 30 minutes earlier, an hour earlier, spend some time with the Lord. Make this time significant. This, we're entering into this season. A once every seven years season. It is significant. It can mean a lot for our country. For us, spiritually speaking, in our nation. Let us enter into this time, not with these spirits, with a spirit of stupor, with a spirit of harlotry, with a spirit of error, with a, a dominant death spirit that's shaped those off of us in a way so that we can make a difference in our nation. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you shalom. Amen. Amen.